How good is it to be in church this morning? Hey, while we're clapping and standing, let's give the team a hand. What an incredible morning we have had in worship. And um, while we're thanking the team, why don't we thank all the teams that have been a part of making this morning happen. We've got incredible tech team, we've got incredible operations team, kids team. And while we're clapping, I want to give a, a hand to our incredible pastors, Pastor Craig and Nadia. What an honour it is to build God's church with you. The most incredible people that I know. So we love you. But hey, why don't you grab a seat? I'm excited to be sharing this morning. And many of us might know that we're in the middle of a series, His Church, My Home. And we had an incredible word from Pastor Craig sharing about how when we do God's work, He refreshes us. And then last week, we had an amazing message from Pastor Mark about how we have a moment of eternity effect, which changes the trajectory of our life, which was just amazing. And I want to continue to build on that with a message this morning called Build or Bury. And this is a message that is out of the parable of the talent. Some of us may be familiar with that parable. And thank you, team. You guys can jump down and I'll call you back soon. It's a parable of the talent and Jesus is telling this parable in Matthew and he's telling it because he's sitting with his disciples and his disciples ask him a question. They ask him, tell us what your kingdom looks like. And so Jesus begins to tell stories, parables. A parable is an illustration to make a point of something. And he begins to tell a parable about talents and how we've all been entrusted with gifts that have kingdom purpose. And he's telling the disciples this story because he wants to stir in them. He wants to encourage them that what they have been entrusted with holds great value and great kingdom purpose to show the world what things can look like when God's in charge. And so I'm going to continue with that and we're going to jump straight into it. Is that okay this morning? We're going to start in Matthew 25 verse 14 to 18. And I'll just read from my notes. Just give me a sec. Again, the kingdom of God will be like a man going on a journey. He called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two talents, and to another one talent. Each according to his ability, then he went on his journey. And I'm just going to stop us right there. And I want to give some context to what a talent was then and what a talent is now. You see, when Jesus was telling this parable, a talent was a great big weight that was used to measure silver and gold. It was used to determine the amount of gold and silver and what its value was. And so here Jesus is talking about how they have been given something of incredible value. They were given five talents, or two talents, one talent. It's incredible to know that back then one talent was worth a man's 20 year of wage, of salary. So they've been given something that has a lifetime of security. And the connection to us is that Jesus is saying, what I've given you, what I've entrusted to you has incredible value. And today, when we think of the word talent, we might think of someone who has incredible skill in performing, in dancing. Our mind might go to, you know, Australia's got talent. But the thing is, our talent and what we're going to find out is that our talent is everything and anything that we can glorify God through. Our talent is our time. Our talent is our resource. Our talent is our skill. And I think a quote that wraps it up so well is a quote from R.C. Rial, and it says this, Anything whereby we may glorify God is a talent. Our gifts, our influence, our money, our knowledge, our health, our strength, our time, our senses, our reason, our intellect, our memory, our affections, our privileges as being part of his church, our advantages as owners of God's word are all talents. Everything that we have is a talent. Everything that we have has kingdom purpose. And so as we continue to read in Matthew 25, 19, the story goes on that after a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibility. Come share the master's joy. Then the one who had received two talents came, said, 
Master, this is the same thing, I have made you too extra. The master says to him, come receive in the joy of your master. Then the one who had received one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant and gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear, I went off and I buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back. There are two clear choices that were made with the talent that they had been entrusted with. Guy one and guy two, they decided to build with their talent. Guy three, he decided to bury his talent. The question I want to ask us today is, do we build or do we bury with the talent that we have been entrusted with? You see, guy one and guy two, they had the confidence that they had the ability to multiply on behalf of the master's house, not on behalf of their own benefit. They knew the part that they played. They didn't have to get told, now this is what you go and do. They were part of the vision. They knew what the master had expected of them. And they were excited to get their talent and to go and multiply it and bring it back to the master. You know, it's amazing to me to think that they made such an increase of money. I mean, five talents is around $7 million that they brought this increase and they didn't take any for themselves. They didn't do a little bit of one for you and two for me on the side. I mean, I don't know about you. I wonder if we would do the same. In our own context today, I wonder what happens when we get that extra bonus at work. If we think, hey, this has kingdom purpose. I wonder what happens when we get that increase in investment. Do we wonder, does this have uh, kingdom purpose? Do we give to kingdom purpose or do we keep it? all to ourselves. You see, remember the question Jesus is asking here, this is what my kingdom looks like. My kingdom looks like everyone playing their part. My kingdom looks like people living on purpose. My kingdom looks like using the talent entrusted to them, their time, their resource, their skill to build the house of God and not to bury it. Church shows people what things can look like when God's in charge. It's an incredible responsibility and privilege that we have. You know, I am the person I am today because of the church. I am a better person today because of the church. I came into my salvation when I was 18 years old. I had what Pastor Mark called last week an eternity effect moment, a moment that changed the trajectory of my life. And uh, within 24 hours, I found myself at a local church. I found myself at the front of the local church saying to the pastor, I want to do things God's way. What am I going to do? And so it was through that that I was connected with a whole bunch of people. And even though I'd received my salvation in that moment, I had a whole bunch of messed up thinking, a whole bunch of messed up beliefs, a whole bunch of addictions that needed to be broken, a whole bunch of brokenness that needed to be restored. And God used the church. He used his people who used their time, who used their resource, who used their skill to build other people and see restoration come into their life. I'm so grateful for an incredible lady named Aileen who would greet greet me on Sundays and she'd say, hey, Kina, it's so good that you're here. I can't tell you how much that means to someone who's trying to work out if they belong. I'm so grateful for this lady who would speak God's truth over my life. Hey, Kina, God's got a plan for you. He's got a purpose for you. I can't tell you what that meant to someone who didn't think they had a purpose or had a plan over their life. I'm so grateful for the team that would come and prepare a space where I could worship, where healing took place that I didn't even know what was healing was happening, that came early and prepared a way for me to come and meet with Jesus. I'm so grateful for a man named John, who was a successful businessman out in the world, but he had used his Wednesday nights to come to church and teach scripture. It was there that I learned about God, about the Holy Spirit, about Jesus, and how they were going to outwork their way in my life. I'm so grateful for a man who took his talent that he was entrusted with to teach the word of God and to build other people. There was this other guy that would come to me after every service and ask me out to lunch. Can I drive you home? I'm so grateful for Dean, who is now my husband. (laughs) I'm so grateful for the church. Let's not forget about guy number three. Scripture says he was afraid and he had a distorted view of his master. 
You know, I think there could be many reasons for this. Maybe he had a bad experience with a previous master. Maybe he'd seen that the other guys got, got five talents and two talents and thought, you only gave me one. What, you don't trust me? Well, I'm just going to bury it. Maybe he was too busy. He had other things on. He had a full life. I don't know what it could have been for him. But I know I can relate with the man that buries his talent. I think we can all relate at some time in our life with the man who buried his talent. You see, I would I guarantee, including myself, that there'd be people in this space that have had bad experience with church in the past. And maybe it's caused you to take what God intended for you to use to build and instead you've used it to bury. You know, maybe there's people in this place that have had been given and entrusted with a talent to minister to children. Maybe there are people in this place that have been entrusted with a talent of creativeness. But because of past hurts, because of insecurities, because of comparison, it has caused you to take that talent and to just dig up and just bury it for a little while. I'll get back to that when I'm better, when things are better, when I feel like I have the confidence to do it. Or maybe it's not a confident thing at all. Maybe there are people in this place that are incredible at business, that are incredible at outworking the gift of strategy, outworking the gift of investment and property. And life has just gotten so consuming and so busy that you're incredible at doing all of that out there. But when it comes to God's kingdom, it doesn't feel like there's much left to give. And it's not saying that we all need to be in ministry full time, but it's all saying we each have been given a part to play We each have been entrusted with talent. Everything we have is his and he has given it to us for this time to use our resource and use our skill to build his kingdom. And the thing is, we're going to be held accountable. What have you done with what I've given you, the master said. There's going to come a time where Jesus says to us, what have you done with what I have given you? Do we use our talent Do we use our time? Do we use our resource? Do we use our skill? Do we use our strength, our senses, our reason, our affections? Do we use our privilege of being a part of his church? Do we use uh, advantages of knowing his word to build or do we bury? You know, we each here would have stories of how our lives have been impacted by other people in our life. And I want to invite incredible friend of mine, Joe, up onto the stage. Why don't we give Joe a hand? And uh, I have been told that when Joe and Jacinta first started coming to church, that they would arrive late and leave early to avoid talking to everybody. Um, But I asked Joe to share a little bit of his story and his journey with what has been maybe something that you've buried and then has been transformed to build. You're an incredible builder of people, of community. So we'd love you to share a bit about that. Thanks, Kina. Um, Yeah, just as Kina showed, my name is Joe, just for those who don't know me, and I'm married to my beautiful wife, Jacinta. We have a a miracle boy uh, named Jaro, who's five years old. Uh, We've been part of life for um, 11 years. Um, So our journey actually started back in Auckland. We attended the Life South campus there, um, and I just remember uh, vividly back then, um, since and I were just looking for a place uh, to be part of, and um, I remember going uh, through Life South and doing our first service and first worship, I just remember vividly just uh, looking to Sinta and just saying, man, this, this is home for us. And, um, and from then on, we just uh, got connected into a connect group, and, um, and even going to a connect group was real, uh, you know, nervous and, oh, what happens here? Um, but uh, we got stuck in them for, for a few years, but I think remembering back then as well too, um, as Kino was sharing, so um, there was a, 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 a group, well I shouldn't say group, but a crew that we called the Backseat Ninjas, so <laughs> only, only elite people go in this, in this crew, so I'll just share a little bit about the, the Backseat Ninjas, where we, we used to sit in the back and it would be either before or after the altar call, as soon as the pastor said, amen, we would leave, <laughs> you know, and then, you know, we came, we received, we were loved on, and, um, and we we're like, yeah, cool, that's it, so we left, and, you know, went on for a few years, and then uh, we felt led to uh, come to Melbourne, um, and we actually didn't know that our life, Melbourne, was about to be open, it wasn't until a couple of days before we made the move, 
Uh, we were told that Life Melbourne, so again, since and I, we arrived here, came to our first Sunday, and, um, and uh, uh, we came here, and again, during worship, um, just looked at each other and just said, man, this, this is home for us. And um, again, we got back into the, the backseat ninjas again. <laughs> and uh, again, same thing happened. Um, but, you know, uh, after a few years, you sort of just sit there and um, God just started knocking at my heart. And, um, and uh, yeah. Um, yeah, God just started knocking at my heart like, would you serve? And so um, I looked at what I had, and so back then I used to um, run doors in regards to bars and clubs and security. Um, and so because I've had a heart for um, creating a safe space for people and just having a good time, and so, uh, so the opportunity to jump on security, um, and that's where it started for me. And, um, and then from there, I kind of went into um, doing some lyrics before, but yeah, it wasn't my, my area, so... <laughs> But you know, that's the cool thing, eh? You sort of just see where what fits, you know, where you're called to. Um, but then it wasn't until when Craig and Nata sent and I to, uh, to lead a connect group, and then the, we had the biggest handbrake. You were like, Burr! are you sure? And so, but I just remember God sort of just uh, knocking out our hearts for that. And, um, and it was like, um, man, if Craig and Nata see something in us that we can't see, but this is something that God is, is um, knocking at our hearts. Um, and I just remember just everything that's happened to us prior to all this, just, man, how people at, ch at the church just really loved on us and really served us, you know, and it was a real humbling experience, and it was something that I wanted to give back to, you know, and, um, and so uh, we got into a leading connect group, and I mean, we've been part with um, Paul and Reitz, man, it was the coolest group, it was all Italians. And Italians and Samoans, man, they they made together, you know, food, you got the entree, then you have the main and all that. So I was like, man, if this is connect group, I'm in. <laughs> but, you know, from there, and um, things sort of just led from one thing to another in regards to leading different connect groups. But over the years, I've just, um, I've just seen God's hand just move yeah. from miracle to miracle. Yeah. People being healed. Addictions being broken, <laughs> and um, you know, and so today, um, you know, I, I'm I'm in this church because of what God's done in my life, but also just the um, you know, there was a point in my life where God was knocking in my heart to serve. Was I had to draw the line in the sand because if I kept opening the door, like oh, the water for and stuff, that will always be there. So I had to really draw the line to like when I'm stepping into this. I mean, Lord, man, you got me. You know, you got my yes. And I'll serve. And so, you know, today what, what that's done for us and impacted us is, man, there are people in this church that I've got deep relationship with. There's some of my own siblings I don't have deep relationship with. But these are, you know, even grown men that I do relationship with, that we do life together, that we speak life in, into each other. And, that. and so for me, it's like when you go through all that, it's like you can't help but be like, man, God, yeah, use me. Uh, use me so that I want what the church has impacted me. I want that for others as well too. So. Amazing, Joe. You got me, mate. Absolute legend. Love Joe, Jacinta and Dry are an incredible part of our church family. It's incredible how much God has entrusted to us. And I love that Joe said it's what God has done with him. It's through the overflow of what has been done that he is able to then say, hey, God, I want to use what you've given me to reach other people, which is so cool. You know, just last month, my family and I had an incredible time. We travelled to Africa. We were able to spend some time with um, the One Heart Foundation, which is a place that um, gives a home to abused and abandoned children. And I had some time with the team, which was really cool. And they were telling me amazing stories about the transformation that they've seen in children's lives. And they told me about one young girl who had recently been a part of the home. Her name is Harriet, eight years old. Came along, had been abused, abandoned by her family, banished from her community. Eight years old, banished from her community. Because they believed that she had a mental disorder and um, she had a physical disorder which made her walk differently to others. And so she came into the home, wouldn't speak, wouldn't connect with anyone, wouldn't play. And so One Heart were able to get her the care that she needed to help with her feet. 
She'd never worn shoes before because her feet wouldn't fit in because she'd grown extra toes on the side. And so for a, a few hundred dollars, I were able to give her an operation that completely transformed her world. You know, after the uh, operation, she came back and she was actually, actually when we visited and she was the happiest little girl that you would have ever seen. And I got to thinking, wow, how a few hundred dollars in the right care can transform someone's life. And I said to the team, hey, how many kids do you reckon there would be that with just a simple operation and in the right care could get over something like a physical disability and live their life to the fullest as God intended? And they said to me, Kina, the list is endless. In fact, not far from here is a centre that is full of children just like Harriet who are living in street care, don't have their family, don't have their community. And it got me thinking to how, as Christians, if we would all play our part and give our tithe across the world, church would have an extra $156 billion to reach those who are lost, to reach those who are hurting, to reach those who have been abused, abandoned, banished from their community. And it had me thinking, somebody's buried something. Somebody's buried their time, somebody's buried their resource, some bury, somebody has buried the skill that God has entrusted for us to play our part as the church and make a difference in the world of young Harriet, to make a difference in the world of people, to make a difference in the world of the community. And it's not like we have to say, hey, that's a little bit far for me. That's in Africa and that's something different. No, we just use what's in our hand with what's in front of us. We use what we are, have an invitation possibly to be a part of. We can play our part here in church, in our life, local community. How incredible that we have that opportunity. Let's take a look at the response of Guy 3, Matthew 25, 25. It says, his master said to him in reply, you lazy servant, so you knew that I harvest where I did not plan and gather where I did not scatter. Should you have not put my money in the bank so at least I could get it back with interest on my return? Now then take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For to everyone who has, been used, who has used them wisely, more will be given and will grow rich. But from the one who was not, even what he has will be taken away. For everyone who values his blessings and gifts from God and has used them wisely will be given more. But from the one who has ignored or disregarded his blessings, even what he has will be taken from him. And you know, when I first uh, taken from him and there, he will be in a place of weeping and grinding of teeth. When I first read this parable, I was so devastated for the guy. I mean, he only buried his talent. God, if I'm honest with you, I will bury my talent. I would think, I don't know what to do with it, so I'm going to bury the talent. There's a stat that says 56% of Christians don't know what their gift is to outplay their part in the church. And we have such a passion to help people discover that. But he buried his talent. And when I started to look at this, I started to see it's actually Jesus' heart through telling this parable to stir the disciples. He's wanting to stir them to say, don't waste your talent. Don't bury your life. Would you give it over to me and help me help you outwork it and use your time and your talent and your resource to change the lives of people? And when I started to look at the grinding of teeth, I found out that it was a meaning of immense regret, overwhelm of regret. You know, it's like this guy got to a point in his life and he saw what could have been. He saw what difference he could have made in people's lives, in his community, in his family, in his workplace, in his friendships, in little Harriet's. He saw this and he had immense regret. And because of the immense regret, he was grinding his teeth. If only I had have done more with what you had given me in the time that you allocated it to me. And it reminds me of a last scene of Schindler's List. Maybe some of us here this morning might have seen it. It's a last scene where there's been a man who has rescued and saved many lives during a war. And it gets to the end of the war and all the people's lives that have been saved come out to thank this man. And he begins to weep. He gets so emotional and he's just uncontrollably weeping and he points to his car and he says, I should have sold it. <laughs> That's 10 more people. 
I should have sold it. And he takes off his gold ring and he holds it up and he says, I should have sold it. That's two more people. This is the picture that Jesus is sharing, making a point to illustrate. He doesn't want us to get up to the end of our lives and have immense regret of what we could have done. Jesus wants us to live our fullest life. He wants us to use our talent and see the world change. He wants us to use our time, our resource, our skill to see people's lives change in our community, in our church, in our family. Jesus is saying, don't bury your talent, build with it. Imagine a church of people that were on purpose, knew their part to play to build God's kingdom. Imagine how that would impact our community. Imagine how that would impact the people that are around us. And it's enjoying um, sharing the joy of the master that is our reward. I don't know about you, but when I see someone set free... When I see someone find their freedom in Jesus, when I see someone who's had no purpose have purpose, when I see someone who's struggling with addiction break free of addiction, when I see someone who's hurting then turn to Jesus and that he restores that place in their life, there is no greater joy <laughs> than to have. And Jesus is saying through that par this parable that when you use what you've been entrusted with to build my kingdom, to build my church, to build people, you receive the joy of the master. You know, Jesus is giving us a God perspective on what it looks like for his kingdom to be seen and displayed throughout the earth. Jesus is giving us a kingdom perspective of what the church can look like when he's in charge of it. He's giving them a kingdom perspective of what it looks like to use talents. Do we use what we've been entrusted with to build or to bury? What part can we play to outwork God's kingdom in our family, in our church, in our community, in our workplace? Knowing we live with this kingdom purpose, it causes us to decide, causes us to have a choice, just like guy one and two and guy three. It causes us to decide and to act and to respond. You know, maybe for some of us, we can relate to guy number three. And the question I want to ask this morning is, what do you need to dig up? Maybe you can relate with possibly the fear, the bad experience, the insecurity. Maybe it's not at all. Maybe you can relate to sometimes too busy, sometimes too comfortable. What do we need to dig up today as individuals to outwork the call that God has for us as his church. Pastor Craig shared an incredible thought in, uh, a couple of weeks ago. He said, I believe that God has resourced us to outwork his plan and vision for this church, and I believe that the resource is in this room. And I agree. <laughs> I agree that God has resourced us with our time, our ability, and skill to outwork his call for this church. So do we want to build with what has been entrusted? Do we want to use what God has given us? I'm going to invite the band to come up as we wrap this up. And as I've been praying over this message and preparing for this message, I just sense that the Holy Spirit wants to do something in us this morning. Maybe for those who bury, he wants to give us the courage to dig up. He wants to give us the boldness to see possibly what we have buried. In fact, when I was preparing for this message, I had such a sense that there are people in this church, in this room, maybe watching online that have been called to ministry, but possibly because of the risk and the unknown that has been buried and put to the side. And the Holy Spirit wants to stir that up and say, hey, what do you need to dig up? I have called you for a purpose. I've entrusted these gifts to you to outwork my call on your life, to see the lives of people change, to make a difference in the world of others. And there are people in here, many people in here who build who build God's kingdom, who are in line with the vision like guy one and two, who knows their part to play, who are building for the benefit of his house, not our own house. And maybe you've been asking God, well, how can I increase my capacity to build? 
God, how can you increase my ability to have greater influence in my community? How can you give me a greater influence in my family? How can you give me a greater influence in my workplace to build for you? And so I want to have a time where we are just going to worship God, make space for the Holy Spirit to move. I'm going to invite everybody to stand. And as we go into this time of worship, I want to just take a moment to pray for everyone in this place. To pray for those that are wanting to dig up something they have buried, to have the courage to do that. And to pray for those who want to have an increase in their ability to build for his kingdom. So right across this place, why don't we position ourselves to worship? Why don't we lift our hands to the one who has it all? Jesus, you have everything. It is because of you, God, that we are here today. We thank you, God, for the talents in this room. We thank you for the creativeness, the business, the care for people. We thank you for the gifts that you have given, you have entrusted to us. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would do a work in this place this morning. God, that you would give us, of the, those of us who may have buried something that you have placed on our heart according to your kingdom, that you would give us the courage to dig that up today, that it would stay buried no longer. And Lord, I pray for those who have a desire to increase in our ability to build for your kingdom, to reach people, to influence people for your kingdom, to point people to you, to build your church, to build your kingdom, to build other people. Lord, I pray for creative inspiration, strategy, ideas, increase in ability, increase in time, increase in resource. We thank you for that this morning. We receive it. And Lord, we say to you, we make room for you to do what you want to do in our lives this morning, God. For everything is yours. We thank you in Jesus' name.